Rudy Giuliani was unmasked on this week's episode of The Masked Singer, where he sang Bad to the Bone while being wheeled on stage in a Jack in the Box costume. When asked about the significance of his costume, Giuliani said, Jack in the Box? Sure I did. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> Let's get into it. What a week. Thank you. According to the upcoming book, This Will Not Pass, both Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy privately said following the insurrection that they thought Donald Trump was responsible and should be driven out of the White House. But not publicly anymore. Evil in the streets, basic shreds of understanding in the sheets. In the days following the attack, McCarthy reportedly told Republican leaders that he would call on Trump to resign, saying, I've had it with this guy. McCarthy called Trump's actions on January 6th atrocious and wrong and eventually concluded that what he did is unacceptable. Nobody can defend that and nobody should defend that. An absolutely iconic thing to say before defending something for the rest of your life. <laughs> Mitch McConnell even told two advisors that Trump would and should be impeached, saying the Democrats are going to take care of the son of a bitch for us. <laughs> Thank you for believing in us, Mitch. <laughs> We should see in ourselves what he sees in us. <laughs> in the end, both McConnell and McCarthy backed down. After it became clear that the GOP base and most of their colleagues still supported Trump, McConnell told a friend, I didn't get to be leader by voting with five people in the conference. I got to be leader by following. And the one thing I'm not going to do is risk my leadership position by doing whatever the opposite of following is, if there's a name for it. <laughs> I like that a friend told that the New York Times must be hard for Mitch McConnell because the only kind of person who would be his friend is the kind of friend who tells the New York Times what you say in private. <laughs> There's no one outside of the overlap of that Venn diagram. If you're friends with Mitch McConnell, you will fucking knife him to anyone who calls you. <laughs> Hours after... Uh, Kevin McCarthy denied the New York Times report revealing that he recommended Trump should resign after January 6th. Audio was played on the on Rachel Maddow's show tonight by the reporters that reveal that it's exactly what he said. I mean, the only discussion I would have with him is that I think this will pass and it would be my recommendation we should be done. Um, I mean, that would be my take, but I don't think he would take it, but I don't know. Just want to remind everybody what the McCarthy statement said. It said, the New York Times reporting on me is totally false and wrong. It comes as no surprise that corporate media is obsessed with doing everything it can to further a liberal agenda. <laughs> you got one thing right in your statement, Kevin. It comes as no surprise. <laughs> I just also want to add that Kevin McCarthy's spokesman denied that McCarthy recommended Trump should resign, telling both the New York Times and The Hill he did not say that. That's tough for your credibility but what will Republicans do without credibility? <laughs> Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' war on Disney intensified this week, with state lawmakers passing a bill to strip Disney of its self-governing status over the company's opposition to the Don't Say Gay bill. Walt Disney's head must be spinning in that mini fridge. <laughs> As awful as their justification is, I'm not sure a corporation should have self-governing status. I'm giving the story of the old world's smallest violin treatment, uh, which does belong to uh, Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> On his podcast, Ted Cruz described the future of woke Disney. Disney stepping in saying, you know, in every episode now they're going to have, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Mickey and Pluto going at it. Like, <laughs> really? Thank you for that image, Senator. You know, that but it's nice. just like, come on, guys. Imagine that, Ted Cruz added, the horror of it. Mickey comes home from work, sweat on his brow, his gloves damp. <laughs> <laughs> Minnie's not home, out late with Goofy again, probably. <laughs> and, then in, <laughs> and then in come the Fantasia brooms and down go Mickey's trademark red pants. <laughs> Ted Cruz went on to say, who by this point was completely nude. Also, I am a bit surprised that Ted Cruz would complain about this. If a dog never fucked a rat, he wouldn't have been born. Because we don't like him. So he's like an animal to us. 
Speaking of Florida, the state has rejected 54 out of the 132 math textbooks submitted for inclusion in next year's public school curriculum, claiming without evidence that some of them incorporated critical race theory. As far as I'm concerned, there are only two acceptable topics for word problems, said one conservative legislator, fan boats and nothing. In more awesome news, Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow delivered a fiery rebuttal after a Republican colleague accused McMorrow of wanting to groom and sexualize kindergartners in a fundraising email to her constituents. Thank you, Mr. President. I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd District had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. So I sat on it for a while wondering why me? And then I realized because I am the biggest threat to your hollow, hateful scheme. Because you can't claim that you are targeting marginalized kids in the name of quote parental rights if another parent is standing up to say no. Pundits are pointing to McMurrow's speech as a template for how Dems can respond to conservative constant railing against wokeness and their baseless allegations of grooming against politicians and, and gay people and trans people. Personally, I felt like the old strategy of curling up in a fetal position until we bloodlessly intone, anyway, back to the economy, was working pretty good. The Biden administration has directed federal agencies to ensure that construction projects funded by the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure package are made with materials produced in the U.S. In exciting news, the first bridge will be constructed from losing lottery tickets, microplastics, and the little sleeves that come with Hot Pockets. <laughs> On Tuesday, Delta, American, and Southwest announced their decision to drop their mask mandate for passengers. What this means in practice is now, if you want to catch or transmit COVID during a flight, you're no longer required to open a little bag of pretzels. <laughs> A number of videos showed pilots announcing the end of the mandate mid-flight as cheering passengers ripped off their masks. You know what people love when they're trapped in a metal tube hurtling through the air at 500 miles per hour? Surprises. <laughs> there are only two appropriate times to clap on a plane, a safe landing in Jerusalem and at the end of Free Guy. <laughs> Which it's time we all faced was better than we thought it was going to be. Can we at least have a conversation about how Free Guy was better than we thought it was going to be? It's time we face it. Don't applaud that. <laughs> applaud backstage if you watched it twice on this most recent trip. Oh. <laughs> Netflix's stock plummeted after they admitted they lost 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter of 2022 instead of adding 2 million as they predicted. The company's stock fell further after Netflix discovered that another 100,000 of the subscribers were actually just cakes. <laughs> the FDA has launched an investigation into whether Lucky Charms is poisoning people after receiving more than 100 reports this year that the cereal caused nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. One potential cause, eating marshmallows for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Shut that whole aisle down. Lucky Charms has always been pretty open about this, though. That's why the cartoon Leprechaun says, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. They're always after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> A Florida man saw Spider-Man No Way Home 292 times in theaters with no bathroom breaks in order to reclaim the Guinness World Record, more like Spider-Man No Wife at Home. <laughs> Rudy Giuliani was unmasked on this week's episode of The Masked Singer where he sang Bad to the Bone while being wheeled on stage in a Jack in the Box costume. <laughs> I just, how do you make Black Mirror after this? <laughs> how do you show, how do you do it? <laughs> I don't think you can. Uh, Giuliani wasn't actually supposed to appear on the show. His clown box just took a wrong turn off the five and rolled onto the back lot. <laughs> when asked about the significance of his costume, Giuliani said, Jack in the box? Sure I did, couldn't help myself. <laughs> Upon being unmasked. Nicole Scherzinger asked if Giuliani was the actor Robert Duvall. <laughs> to which Ken Jong said, that's not Robert Duvall. Nicole, <laughs> Nicole, sweetie. 
This is an apocalypse now. This is the apocalypse. <laughs> Coming to Netflix next year, is it Cake or Robert Duvall? <laughs> and finally, the Hubble Space Telescope has confirmed the discovery of the largest comet ever detected. More than twice the width of Rhode Island with a mass of 500 trillion tons. It's so massive that scientists initially mistook it for your mom. When we... <laughs> This week, the internet was captivated by a trailer for Tucker Carlson's new documentary, The End of Men, about the decline of masculinity in America and how to fix it by nuking your balls. Let's take a look. There's somebody nuking their balls. Now someone hot is moving a tire. You're in hard times. Oh, well. it's enough. It's enough. <laughs> As you can imagine, we had a few follow-up questions, so we invited a masculinity expert to help us make sense of it. He's the aggressively heterosexual host of Raw Facts on Our America News. Please welcome to the stage, Brad Turbo. <laughs> Brad Turbo. Hi. Yeah, sure. Elbow, elbow bump from Brad Turbo. Thank you so much for having me, John. I'm fucking rock hard to be here. <laughs> okay, Brad, you've built a career out of helping men feel more masculine. Yeah, well, let me stop you right there, John. Okay? It's got nothing to do with feelings, all right? Men don't feel. We respond to external stimuli with rational problem solving and or guns. So then I'd love to get your response to this special and the goop style influx of products to make men more manly. Do you believe any of this stuff works? Yeah, not only do I believe in them, John, I sell them myself on my new QVC show, Men Also Be Shopping. <laughs> The items I offer on Men Also Be Shopping will make you more of a man or your money back. Absolutely no returns. Brad, come on. Isn't this all hokum? A baloney? Balderdash? I mean, in your time in the field, have you ever come across testicle tanning as a treatment to raise testosterone? Of course, John! I was an early adopter to red light therapy. You should see my balls these days. <laughs> They're like an old sea captain who's never owned a hat. <laughs> oh, God. And that's good to oh, you? Oh, yeah, that's what you want. <laughs> that's what you want. That's what you want. You want to take a gander? No, um, no, oh. I appreciate it, but maybe later. Even if you yourself... I mean, maybe. No, later. Open later, invitation. Later, later. <laughs> open invitation not, to gander. Surprisingly open to it. Let's keep moving. Even if you yourself use them, you have to admit how goofy these products seem to the average person. Even Tucker admits as much when he interviews fitness guru Andrew McGovern for a special, The Science of a Tan Testy. Is shaky at best. Yeah, but bromeopathic medicine no, goes right. way beyond testicle tanning, John, all right? I've boosted my testosterone levels by injecting myself with mud, going on a raw steak cleanse, <laughs> slamming my dick in the door of my Ford 450F on purpose. You know the fucking drill. But I gotta be really manly to call it a 450F. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard someone... I don't call her in the lines, bro. <laughs> I mean, that's really manly. Uh, just to be clear, <laughs> you believe that <laughs> you believe that masculinity mm. is a function of your hormone levels, oh. and that it's not only safe but advisable to alter your own hormone levers mm. to better reflect your inner manliness. Sure, what are you getting at, dude? Nothing at all. Uh. Brad, I understand you brought a few of your favorite masculinity-boosting products to show us today. Even after our producers begged you not to. What have you got for us? John, I've got some items here that'll give you chest hair so luxurious your beautiful thick wife could knit a cardigan out of it. <laughs> hey, sweetheart, could you bring me my bag? It's next to you. Yeah, here she comes. Oh, she oh there's another bag? Oh, there's <laughs> another bag. Are you telling me I brought the wrong bag? You brought... You brought... <laughs> Agree to disagree on the right bag. How do you open this shit? All right. It's a gorgeous purse. <clears throat> what, this? <laughs> this is a hunter's expedition sack made of military-grade leather oh, with see. tactical inner po pockets tactical. to hold your knives and elk jerky, okay? <laughs> you think the average lady has enough knives to fill this bad boy? I think we hang out with different women, but... Uh, but it's clearly not a purse. I apologize. Yeah, real men don't apologize, John, but I'd be happy to settle this via arm wrestling. I'm not. 
I'm not going to arm wrestle you. How about leg wrestling? No. How about torso wrestling? I'll warn you now, it does look a lot like Zumba, and it's a lot of fun. Just show us your tchotchkes, you bargain bin Jordan Peterson. All right, you're right. We can do a push-up contest later. Maybe after a cocktail? <laughs> <laughs> nah? Okay, maybe. All right. All right. Well, up first, you're going to love this. I'm stoked to present our best-selling Predator Paint. All right? So dozens of QVC-funded studies have proven it can boost the wearer's dominance in social, professional, and post-apocalyptic settings. Brad, I have to tell you, if I'm being honest, that does look like eyeshadow. You you couldn't be further off the mark, John, okay? At just $79.95, Predator Paint has been scientifically formulated to mimic the threatening colors of the world's (laughs) most... You got uh-huh. thick cards here. Yeah, I love they're, it. They're, they're thick cards. Of the world's most thick, poisonous animals. Very okay? poisonous. Triggering a fear response in the beta cucks around you. So. so it's wildly expensive eyeshadow. Got it? With all due respect, John. And I say this with all due respect for you. I feel it. Show. You're what's wrong with America specifically. Oh, that's tough to hear. You've been so fucking brainwashed by the femstream media. <gasps> That you wouldn't recognize masculinity if it dick slapped you in the face. Maybe after a cocktail? <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Introducing the Tundra Blast Biohack Assault Garment. All right, that's, that's a fun skirt. I mean, that's just a fun skirt. What? Just- I like that idea. No. I think so. Only to the feeble liberal eye, John. The assault (laughs) garment is designed to maximize the airflow around the wearer's testicles, all right? Mm. Improving sperm counts and promoting better testosterone circulation, okay? If a woman tried to put this on, she'd certainly die. (laughs) It's also available in camo, American flag, and, oh, blood spatter. I'm not sure... (laughs) <laughs> Interesting. What's your uh, big idea? I'm not sure testosterone circulates, but mm. listen, I'm all in favor of men wearing skirts. Wow. But wouldn't it be easier to drop this this gross hypermasculine facade and just sell men some skirts? Hey, can I let you in on a little secret, John? Okay. When I step onto the set of Men Also Be Shopping, <laughs> which is aesthetically a cross between a hunting lodge and the bunker where Hitler shot himself, <laughs> I'm using air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> not sure why. Okay. <laughs> Don't. I'm not just there mm-hmm. to sell products. Okay. I'm not. I'm selling the truth. And the truth is that our society is crumbling. It's falling apart faster than a Nature Valley bar in a lesbian's fanny pack. Wow. That's, that's and crumbling. And it'll, it'll keep on crumbling too, John. Mm-hmm. Unless the straight and just as importantly white... <laughs> Men of this country, nut up and fucking defend it. You know, they kind of wanted to applaud. Is that what you really believe, Brad? Oh, Oh, God, no. I don't believe in anything. I just know that scared people watch more TV and buy more shit. You know what I mean? Like this handy little bottle of Dr. Benny's Rattlesnake Jizz. It's an on-the-go inhaler, and it's in my bag. It's in there. You got to really get in there. Get in yeah, that, this, that tactical bag you know, there. this tactical bag. You know, it's in here, John. It's definitely in there. It's somewhere in there for sure. It's a tactical bag. It's, it's in, in the, the pouch. pouch. It's my, obviously in the pouch. My fucking wife says. His <laughs> <laughs> fucking wife said it's in the pouch. Did yeah, he, so he it's, the, it. it's an on-the-go inhalant. Uh-huh. Every alpha male needs to keep his blood vessels dilated and his pheromone game real strong. So there it is. All right. Brad Turbo. I think you both, you and I both know that's a bottle of poppers uh-huh. and, uh, and Brad, even you can't deny how insidious this all is. You're selling the idea that society needs strength from angry men to restore order. Aren't you at all concerned about what a lonely, desperate, confused person might do? Okay, can I say something? I bullied all the concern out of my body years ago, John. All right, I aimed a crossbow at my own head and told the weakness to get the fuck out. Of course, I've couldn't. <laughs> Of, co- <laughs> of course you did. Yeah. So besides, what's there to worry about? Okay? Men enforced traditional gender roles for thousands of years, and as far as I know, nobody got hurt. 
Yeah, nobody. Nobody got hurt. Brad, you chiseled moron. Thank, thank you. you for being. <laughs> thank you for being here. Appreciate Before it. you go, <laughs> that's where, why I wore the shirt. Yeah. Where can anyone with a crippling shopping addiction buy the items you've shown us today? You can tune in to my QVC show every Saturday morning at 3 a.m. Eastern. And folks can also find me in the parking lot after the show. I have no one to go home to, and basically no one in my life can stand me. So I'll be out there for a while. Does anyone want to hang out and watch me bench press this homo's Tesla? Maybe after a cocktail? <laughs> Maybe after a cocktail. Brad Turbo, everybody. Hey! <laughs> <laughs>